Midnight Opera Summer Campers. You know, ever since my voice has been auto-tuned in the camper showcase, I have felt so powerful. I have felt so, um, it's the most alive I've ever felt. And I want to thank you, Dancing Cat 2.0, for auto-tuning my Mad Opera Summer Campers. I felt so, I feel famous, frankly. Thank you, everyone. Hi, hi, everyone. It's me. It's Camp Counselor Dan. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a white man who's about 40-ish years old. I've got silvery black hair. I've got a signature mustache, green eyes. I got a little scruff today. I need to shave, I think. I'm wearing a black Met Opera t-shirt that says Voices Rise. It also says something very special today. Can you see what this says? It says, I voted because it is a voting day here in New York State, in the United States of America. And I love voting, everyone. It's like my favorite thing. I love being able to vote. I love being able to exercise my democratic right to form a government that I approve of. So I want all of you, when it's your time in life to vote, to get out and vote, do it. It just, it'll make you feel so cool. And you get a sticker in America. You usually get a sticker. It's a pretty cool sticker. I have to say, I voted. Oh wait, there it is. I voted. Anyway, um, we are here for crafting. So today I'm going to vote for more opera always, and I'm going to vote for more crafting. And uh, we're going to get both of our wishes today. First, I would love to bring into the stream, the live stream, my friend, camp counselor, Sophia. Hey, camp counselor, Sophia. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Oh, my gosh. Camp Counselor Sophia, will you introduce yourself? We have some new campers today because in New York City, today is the first day of summer vacation. Oh, my gosh. I wish I had that, too. Oh That's my gosh, so right? much fun. Oh. So yeah. Can you just uh, introduce yourself? Tell people how they can address you. Let us know. Of course. For those of you who don't know me, I am Camp Counselor Sofia. I use any pronouns. I speak Spanish because my family's from Peru. And I saw some people talking about how like it's the winter right now. So I feel you. <laughs> um, I'm wearing this black blouse. Uh, I have brown skin. I have short hair above my ears. Um, my hair is kind of this gray green going on. Um, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> that's great thank you so much now Sophia while I have you here I just want to let you let the campers know that you along with camp counselor bat Tim have been uh expertly managing our Google Classroom for us this summer and you've been uh, helping us translate some of our activities into Spanish and making them more accessible to everyone around the globe uh, I think that's so cool and I wanted to um because I know you're going to put a request for this in the Google Classroom later today, but I wanted to tease out our guest for tomorrow um, for our artist chat. Tomorrow at 12 noon, friends, we are going to speak with a real live Met Opera star, a rising star, uh, bass, the deepest voice. I, I, I'm probably like, even at my deepest, I'm not a bass. <laughs> bass, whose name is Matthew and Chell, and Matthew um, is uh, this just fantastic performer, teacher, um, so much information, great social media. And I want to take a quick look at some of um, Matthew's TikTok because it is so cool. And you're all going to want to submit your video questions for Matthew in the Google class or in the Google classroom, in the job form. Get those in, get those in, right, Sophia? There's nothing more fun than yes. that. Let's meet Matthew and get ready for tomorrow, okay? Are you a baritone or bass who struggles with your high notes? Watch this. Matthew Anshell, your TikTok voice teacher, and this is a tip for my baritones and basses out there. A lot of teachers talk about placing the voice in the mask and finding your high notes up really high and in your face. But if you have a lower singing voice like me, sticking it in your mask is only gonna decrease your range and make hitting your high notes so much harder. So I want you to think about the back of your head and deep in your chest. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great! Let's try it with singing. Let's do a whoa, whoa, and let's only feel it in our chest and at the back of our head. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, let's look at some clips of some amazing basses and baritones. Whoa. Thank you for watching and sing pretty. <laughs> oh my gosh, I cannot oh wait for tomorrow. Gosh. 
I 10 out of 10 will be there. And I'm going to be like, whoa. Ho. Can you do that? Whoa. Yes. Right up in the chest, in the back of the head. Whoa. Ho. All right. All right. <laughs> Get those video questions in to Matthew. We can't wait for tomorrow. Okay. And I cannot wait to introduce, to reintroduce for some of you, our camp counselor, Dejour, who is uh, a costumer, uh, a milliner, a creative artist uh, of the highest order and a crafty, crafty, crafty camp, classic, classic camp counselor. This is Roxana Ramsour, who worked at the Metropolitan Opera in the costume shop making hats. So I don't know if there's a better job on earth than that, Sophia, do you? I don't think so. Um, and uh, Maybe being a camp counselor, but this person has <laughs> both. This That's person right. has both. <laughs> let's get Roxana in here and let's get some crafting going. Hi, Roxana. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be here today with y'all. Oh, um, my gosh. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for coming back to camp. Oh, my God. It's my pleasure. I love hanging out with y'all. Will you just do us a quick favor and just introduce yourself and describe your appearance and your uh, your screen for us? Yeah, totally. So my name is Roxana Ramser. I use the pronouns she, her. And um, I come to you from the unceded ancestral lands of the Shasta, Takalma, and Lagawa people that we call Ashland, Oregon. Um, and it is hot here, y'all. It's really hot. <laughs> and so today I'm wearing super bright summer colors. Um, and I have brown and gray hair that's curly and medium length. Um, I have white skin and blue eyes. And I'm in a room with a pale blue wall with a lot of framed artwork um, created by family and friends behind me. And um, I am super glad to be here today. I'm so happy to have you here. And thank you for reminding me with your land acknowledgement because we are coming to you on behalf of the Metropolitan Opera today. And the Metropolitan Opera is located on the unceded ancestral lands of the Lenape people. And I just always love uh, being able to acknowledge our indigenous communities uh, and where they live and the land that uh, that we now inhabit and, and honoring them. So thanks for reminding me to do that. I, I forget and it's not cool. Um, you're getting so much love in the chat, Roxana. I understand you have a little hat making craft for us today. Yeah, yeah. So um, I y'all haven't had a chance to watch Cinderion yet, have you? Uh, they they can start today. Okay, fact, cool. Yeah. So when you're watching, there is a moment um, in the court where the suitors come and try and woo the prince. And um, there's a wonderful group of four very persistent dancers who perform for him multiple times. And they wear some fetching fascinators that look something about like this. Oh, that is so cool. And so that's what we're going to make today. Wow. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. And I, I know we have some photos from the actual production that we yeah. can see what those look like too. Can I share some of those now? Oh, please do. Oh my gosh. This is such a great hat. Look at that. And she's living her best life in that hat. <laughs> totally. That's a baby crown fantasy hat. <laughs> <laughs> Who else yes. Is? So, so a fascinator is like a miniature hat. It's going to, it's going to be like undersized. It's going to be very petite. It's going to be perched on the head. And so you usually need something to help it stay on. So we're going to use um, a headband. That's the kind of the easy peasiest way, but I'm going to show you um, several different ways. If you don't happen to have a plain headband to mount yours on, no problem. There's, there's all kinds of different ways to make it work. I can't wait. I'm going to, uh, Sophia and I are going to back out of here. We're going to let you do what you do so well. Um, and I might stop back in for a joke o'clock if that's okay with oh, you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, please. yeah. We can't, we can't not. Okay. Yeah. Roxanne, have a great time. Holler if you need me. I have a bunch of, I know we have some photos and stuff and just say, Dan, pop those photos in for me. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So, um, if Dan, can you pop a photo of the materials? And um, yeah, so these are some of the materials that we're gonna need today. Um, we need some basic red paper. Um, we need, it's great if it's a little bit stiff, but if it's not, I can give you some tips for stiffening it, stiffening it up to make it work. Um, we need um, a headband. And if you don't have a headband, you can use pipe cleaners or some ribbon. Um, you would need two pipe cleaners. Um, you need some scissors and a pen or pencil 
and tape. So those are the essential things, but if you wanna do some like fancy decorations on it, you might add some large sequins or um, pom-poms. And, um, and I think I'm, I'm gonna use a combination of tape and stapler today. You can also use glues, but sometimes those take a little while to dry. So I'm gonna just rock and roll with a stapler today because it's fast and easy. Okay, so if, um, if folks have, I'm gonna, let's see, Dan, can you share my, yeah, yeah, share my screen, thank you. So this is my working table here. If um, there was a link available to y'all for this pattern, which is our crown pattern, um, and if you don't happen to have a printout already of this pattern and you wanna work with us, in time, you can take a look at this and just sketch one freehand on another piece of paper. So when I look at this pattern, I see a big arc. It's like from a big circle. It's maybe a quarter of a large circle. So I'm just gonna draw a big arc. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna do it in Sharpie so y'all can see it better. Okay, it looks like that. I'm gonna draw um, two straightish sides, and I'm gonna make five peaks. I'm gonna go zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag. Oh, you know what? I ran out of room. I'm gonna I'm gonna redo these peaks over here so I get enough in. This is just your pattern, so it doesn't matter if you make a couple of tries at making those things. Totally fine. This little rectangle that I'm drawing on the end is going to be the tab that we use to connect things. It's going to end up wrapping around and connecting over here. So I'm going to use, I'm doubling over the line that I want to use. And I'm going to draw some circles at the top of each of these peaks. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's totally cool. So here's my pattern. And I can just rock and roll with it. And it's very, you know, of course I've done this before, but it's pretty similar to the one, to the pattern that, that was provided. So once you have your pattern, whether it's from the printout um, available online or whether it's the like quickie quickie one that you made, you just cut it out. Now, one of the trickiest things is cutting out circles. That's kind of tricky to cut out a circle without cutting through that skinny tip across your point. But that's fine. If you cut it off, you can always tape it back on. No problem. So I'll let you guys cut that out. And I'll give you a little, a little pro tip. If you like to make, if you are a perfectionist and you like to make perfect circles, you can use things around your house as a template. So this glue stick is a really good size for this circle deco detail. So if you set your, your object down, it could be a coin, it could be a, a nickel, a US nickel. Um, you can draw around that piece and then you have a really perfect circle and then your pattern will be super duper and your, your circle will be really symmetrical. So I'm gonna cut out the rest of this. And I kind of ran out of paper here, but that's okay. I can I can fill it in on the real paper when I get to it. And one of the reasons why you might think that like, oh, it's a crown, it's a rounded shape. Dan, will you switch my camera for a sec? So you might think, oh, like we would start just like this, right? And start with a, with just a cylinder. But what happens with this crown is that it is flared. It's smaller at the bottom than at the top. And in order to get a flared shape, rather than having a straight edge at the bottom, what you want is a curved edge at the bottom. That way 
when you connect it together in the back, you can have a flat seat, but it flares, flares out this way. So we have a smaller base and wider at the top. And that just helps give this shape the nice character that we want to have. That's like a little, a little mini junior patterning 101. Um, so, and Dan, if you would switch my camera again, that'd be awesome. So I'm going to keep going. This is what my, my cutout from my, my computer template pattern looked like. It was also hand-drawn, so it is also not perfect. Imperfection is fine. Embrace it. All right. I'm going to trace around this. This is my red paper. Um, this is just a big, I, I bought a big piece of um, red cardboard, uh, red poster board from the dollar store. And um, as a real affordable way to get a stiff, um, a stiff paper, it's red on both sides, which fits the bill for um, what we're looking for. So I'm just tracing around the edge of this paper, tracing around my circles. Now, if you wanted to be practice, practice doing something well perfect, we could try, we could leave off those, those kind of rough cut rounded circles I did before. And I can use my template, your coin or your glue stick lid, whatever you have, and you could trace a more perfect circle around that piece. And now here's my opportunity cor to correct where I had kind of run out of scrap paper on the other one. I can correct that and give myself a full circle and make it a little bit perfect. More, more better. All right. So uh, now we just cut this out. And while we're cutting, I think I kind of, I kind of want to tell you a little, a little story about how this crown came to be. Um, so the director and designer of, um, saint -Trian is a gentleman named Laurent Pellet. And, um, there is a great interview of Laurent and, um, one of the, the head, um, Taylor costumer at the Met Opera, um, at the end of it's kind of like a bonus clip at the end of the HD presentation, the streaming presentation. And I totally recommend that y'all watch it. It's super cool to get to see the designer director and hear him talk about his work and how he came to, you know, design the things that, that he did. And one of the things that, um, I learned, I learned many things from that, um, interview, but one of the cool things was he was talking about, he and the set designer were working together and talking about, you know, what, um, what, you know, how to start, you know, with their concept. And um, they first talked about the first inspiration is the music. So, um, and you can switch to me now if you want for a second. I'm going to let folks cut, finish this last arc. I'm finishing this last time. Okay. And um, yeah, so, okay. So what he said was um, that first it starts with the music, total inspiration for the music, um, that there's humor and motion and fairy tale. And then they started thinking about fairy tale and they said, well, fairy tale starts from a book. And um, Dan, I have a couple pictures that I sent to you that he shared um, that was direct inspiration. So this is a book from Laurent Pelle's childhood. It's a book of Cinderella and um, uh, Le Comte de Pearl. I don't know how to speak French, so I'm sure I am not doing that um, correctly, but, and Gustave Doy um, did the illustrations. And if you'll show the next picture, so notice that this is, this plate in the, in the book is all black and white. And that cover was that beautiful tooled red with gold. Um, so those were the colors that they wanted to use in the production. So you'll see when you watch it that there is 
there are only three colors, or basically just three colors. There is the red, the red of the cover of the book. There is black of the ink of the text in the book and the white, the, the paper, the parchment of the page. And um, it's just such an elegant and refined um, way to tell the story. And they use it in so many inventive and amazing ways that you'll see in the set. Um, you'll notice text all throughout the show. You'll notice, um, well, I just want to. I just want to challenge you to see how many places you see where they use this book as inspiration. See how many places you can see where they use text in the um, scenic design and the props and the and the furniture um, and and the costumes, even places around, and where they use red to really like highlight, uh, create highlights and um transitions from one space into the next space um it's pretty cool to like know the background information i love that it was a book from laurent's childhood that started that kicked that off um and i'll just mention to give the credit um barbara de limber is the scenic designer so i thought she did a fantastic job in the show um so okay so i'm pretty sure that y'all are probably up to speed as in terms of like having your pattern cut out, traced onto your red paper and um, having your red paper cut out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on to the next step. The next step is to, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. The next step, and this is a, this is a really great trick. Um, we can switch to the other camera, Dan, if you don't mind. So with this um, moment, I want to build in a little bit of reinforcement because remember we're gonna we're gonna thread a headband through, or if we don't have a headband, we can use pipe cleaners or ribbon. And um, if we looked, if there's a spot about here and about here where if we folded, that's the mid. If we folded this in half, I'm gonna do it on my um, this free pattern. If we folded this in half, and then we folded that in half again, basically we're folding it into quarters, and this in half. So I folded, I folded the crown in half, and then I folded, not including this edge, because that's our overlap edge. I folded this one to the middle, and I folded this edge to the middle. These folds here, these are gonna give us the it's the side to side midpoints. This is our this is our center front. We'll abbreviate it with the CF. Um, and this is our our side SS for side seam, even though there's not a seam there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce that area with some tape, with some clear um, with some clear tape, and that is going to I'm going to do it on my red one. Now that um, Make sure, let me double check that I got, that my guesstimations were correct. I'm gonna move this one over a little bit. So these lines that I'm drawing, I'm gonna do a little smidge closer to the edge. These little hash marks are where um, I'm gonna end up slitting it to put the headband through. So if we put a piece of tape there, that's gonna reinforce that area and make the edges of those cuts um, help support that um, action of putting the headband or the ribbon through. It's going to help it not rip. Now, if you are using um, a very um, a more flimsy fab, um, paper, like it's not um, it's not a card card stock or a poster board, you could also use the tape to reinforce other vulnerable areas. Like I could just take clear tape and go all the way around the bottom edge. And um, that'll just help the bottom edge be more durable. And the other place that's vulnerable, if you're using a softer paper, I'm just burnishing the tape in with the edge of my thumbnail. That's what I'm doing, I'm like rubbing it in. Um, the other places that are vulnerable are these deep V cuts. It's kind of easy to overcut. So if you did happen to overcut, just mend it with some tape. And even if you didn't overcut, if you have a, um, 
a vulnerable, like a softer paper, a fluffier paper, you can reinforce these points with a piece of tape. And that way they'll be less prone to like ripping and tearing. Okay, so now that that's reinforced, I'm going to make go ahead and make my slits because it's easier to do it now than later. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm doing a very gentle fold, not making a hard crease because I don't really want it to show up later. Um, so I'm just doing a gentle fold and my scissors, take my scissors and I'm folding it right in the middle of my hash mark. I'm just gonna make a little slit. So it ends up being about an inch long, about like a half inch slit. I'm gonna fold the other side and make a slit. So there it is, there's my little, these are my little openings that I can slide my headband through. And now, next step is we get to really make this funneled shape. So you wanna use this tab that we, we added on to the end of the um, piece. It's this striped part of the pattern. That's our underlap, so I'm gonna Lap it under this side. I'm gonna take, oh, I said I was gonna use my stapler today. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the stapler. I'm gonna staple this. What? My stapler's out of staples. That is not good advanced planning. So I'm gonna use tape instead. It's a good thing I had lots of tools present. All right. I'm gonna take the outside edge but I'm also taping the inside flap so that, that it's secure on both the inside edge of that flap and the outside. So there we have it. And um, the next thing that we're gonna do is make the kicky little fold, the, the, the kicky little um, curves because the, um, those cute dancers, they're just so silly. They're really humorous characters. And um, one of the ways that you can get that curve to happen is, I don't know if you've ever used curling ribbon, but you can basically put some pressure between your index finger and your thumb and rub it. Sometimes you can even use the little edge of your nail, your thumbnail, rub it as you extend from the midpoint of the crown out to the tip of that point. And that's gonna help that roll over. And instead of having um, a crown that's very sort of static and straight and erect, you end up with this sort of um, more humorous kind of jester type act shape. Go ahead and do all of these. Isn't it funny how just one small change just changes the whole attitude of the hat? That's kind of how when people wear hats, they're um, it's so personal how they tilt their brim, how they curve or arch their their brim around. It's very personal style related, and then so we end up with this like this little curvy shape. Now, if you wanted to, um, you could add some pom-poms to these spots. You could just put a spot of glue and glue those on. You could also take sequins or whatever kind of decorations you might have and glue those on, um, decorate it up. But um, even if it's just 2D um, for those spots, I think it's just as effective if you have the, um, the 3D going. So the next thing is to slide the headband through these slits that we made. So here's our handy dandy reinforced slit. I'm gonna slide one side in and then I'm gonna slide the other side in. I'm just gonna thread it along. And I'm gonna thread it so that, because a fascinator is often um, kind of 
perched a little bit to the side. I'm not gonna put it right in the middle, although if you like it, that could be your personal style to wear your fascinator with the crown perched right on the middle of your head. Um, but I'm gonna put mine a little bit to the side um, so that it's a little bit tilted towards my right eye. Dan, do you mind switching that camera? So here I am with this and, um, and there's my little crown. Very fetching and silly, just like those dancers who are wooing, they're doing their mightiest job to woo this prince and it is hilarious. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's the ins and outs of it. I do have, Dan, I don't know, it looks like it's joke o'clock. Yay, I'll show you guys some variations of materials after joke o'clock. Is it joke o'clock already? I can't believe yeah. it. <laughs> it's always joke o'clock in my heart. So I feel <laughs> here we go. Okay, my gosh. What an awesome hat, first of all. And it looks like a jester's hat. So I feel like this is perfect for joke o'clock. Um, and I love how you taught everyone how to like tease at the edges. Okay, enough, enough, Dan. Let's do the jokes. Oh my gosh, this is a perfect joke for our craft today. This is from Shivangana, who is from Oman, but is currently in India. Uh, Shivangana asks, what makes music in the hair? What makes music in the hair? Anybody? Anybody? A headband. <laughs> That's really good. Shivangana, <laughs> you, should be, you should be writing for, uh, for The Tonight Show. Yeah, SNL. Uh, here she comes. SNL. I know. It's joke clock. It's joke clock. It. Okay, let's get one more joke in here. Let's see what else we have. Oh, this is a good one. This is a this is an opera theme joke from our from our young uh, let's say uh, rising star tenor from Buenos Aires. Diego says, "What do you call a line of men waiting to get haircuts?" I don't know, Dan. A barber cue. <laughs> <laughs> that made me think of Figaro. Of course, of course, friends. These are great jokes. And I have to say, keep them coming. Oh, awesome. Hi, Woody. <laughs> e. um, friends, great, great to see all of you. Um, Roxana, I think that's, is that our, my gosh, let me get you. I want to make your hat even bigger. That is so cool. Friends, I want to remind everyone um, that you can come back to this craft you can watch it again on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're enjoying it. You can revisit it. You can slow it down, do the steps slower. We have all of the steps, I think, in the Google Classroom, so you can kind of follow along at home. But I hope that they'll wear, do you think that they'll wear these hats to the um, our final camp dance party of the summer on Friday? Oh my God, you should. I would. Yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. They're so fun. It, make it your own, do your own colors, like. Just Maybe I'll make one too. I made one before when we did this and it was so fun. And then I wore it all Christmas and all awesome. the holiday season. <laughs> I even put some, I, cause we did it at the holidays. I even put them on my Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh yeah. They're so fun. Right. Oh my gosh. They're saying more jokes. They want more jokes. I don't know. Do we have time for one more joke? Let's oh, see. Yeah. I know. And we're, oh my gosh. Let's see. Great. Jo great jokes. Good job. Agreed. Okay. All right, this is, I think this is from, uh, who is this from? Let's see, what do we have here? That was the last one was from Diego. Let's see. Oops. Diego, good joke. All right, mm -hmm. let's go to, uh, okay. This is from Sanyi in Colorado Springs. This is a very, all right, this is a dance party joke. This is a very high concept joke, Roxanne. Are you going to, can you go with this? Okay. This is a very inside track Met Global summer camp joke. Right on, right on. From Sanyi, I think Sanyi, I think I'm saying this correctly. From Sanyi in Colorado Springs. Rick Astley, the rock and roller, came over to my house yesterday to borrow some movies for his kids. Okay, Sanyi, we're with you. We know who that is. Because uh, we always listen to Rick Astley's famous song during the Met Global Summer Camp Dance Party. Um, but Sanyi said to Rick Astley, I told him, you can have Encanto and Sleeping Beauty, but I'm never going to give you up. <laughs> That is so good. <laughs> that is really deep. <laughs> that is that is so good. That's so bad. It's good, and then it uh -huh. and bad, and then it's good again. Yeah. It went all the way around. <laughs> well, <laughs> bravo, everyone! Thank you so much for this wonderful lesson. Um, 
Dan, do you mind if I show the folks um, a couple of ideas if they don't have those exact materials? Just oh, will you please? I would love yeah. that. Yeah, we have time for sure. We can just switch to um, the document yeah. camera. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So if you don't have like the red paper, but you're like, I really want to do this craft today, um, use something else. So here's a paper. It was green with white polka dots, and I colored the polka dots red. Um, just with a marker and then I colored the outside with some with a crayon so you can you can do that this one was uh, made with some wrapping paper that was mostly red and so what I did for this one is I glued two pieces of wrapping paper together just to give it some more stability because um, sometimes the wrapping paper is a little flimsy and what's cool that happens with these is they they become really bouncy <laughs> When you use a, a weaker paper and then you, you weed it down with the pom-poms, it becomes really bouncy, which is kind of fun to wear. Um, here's another example of like a pattern paper that I just had kicking around and I painted the inside to be red because um, I wanted both sides to be interesting. And then if you, and you can also just make it in construction paper. If you have construction paper, um, this is also an example of that, that softer paper that becomes really bouncy when you have it on, which is kind of fun. And if you have um, just a ribbon, you just thread the ribbon through those two slits that we made um, in the same way. And then you can just tie this around your head. Um, if you want to do it with a pipe cleaner, I recommend twisting the pipe cleaner together at the ends. Like this. If you have an adult size head, you have to use the full length of the um, full length of the pipe cleaner. If you're a kid size head, you might be able to do it a little bit smaller, but you pretty much need the full length. You also thread it through those two loops and then you join it together. And Dan, if you'll switch the camera back to the to me. Um, so the one thing that I want to show you that's kind of specific about fascinators, which might if you if you have something that goes all the way around your head, you might not realize that it goes behind your head when you're putting it on this way. So, I mean, you could wear it like a chin strap, but it looks better if it goes behind your head. And you just kind of pop that around that occipital bone in the back of your head. And then there you go. Voila, my, my pipe cleaner came undone. But you get the point. Anyway, I just wanted to make that point about putting it behind your head so you don't have the, um, you don't have to wear it like a chin strap. There, that's it. And Hola. Roxana, I was wondering too if I have if I've reinforced it, you mm -hmm. know, like you taught us to with the tape. Uh -huh. um, could I just potentially just maybe bobby pin that into my hair? Without, Absolutely, right? that is another excellent idea. Yeah. Yep, you can yeah. just bobby pin it in. Perfect. And it, you know, for stage, we we'll, we we'll use something called horse hair, so it's it's not made from horses hair. But it used right. to be, but it's just nylon um, that's woven oh, cool. in this really cool way, and. Um, and it creates a surface that we that milliners use, especially theatrical milliners use, mm -hmm. to install in the hats, and that helps the um, run crew pin it into the wigs, and um, so that stays on their heads very securely while they're doing all their dancing and all their moves. It must you be see a headband on the dancers yeah. on stage; yeah. they probably have it pinned directly into. Yeah, them. I'm trying to see if we can see anything like that here, but you can't. Yeah. It almost, yeah, it's just sort of sitting in there. Yeah, um, because they have get close oh, enough there but you can yeah that is an amazing scene with a parade of those oh gosh. fantastic red dresses coming through and, and if you um get to see that interview with laurent pelle um you get to see the rooster the chicken dress up close and um get to hear them talk a little bit about what it's like building those cool shapes it is a favorite of mine for certain the costumes in this are just uh, and, and the red, it's just the, the nonstop, the red, the, and it's fun because the Met and the inside of the Met is red and gold. So, <laughs> you know, so to be in the Met watching it and seeing all this red and gold kind of coming at you is really a delight. Yeah. Um, friends, thank you, Roxana. You are the you're welcome. Oh my gosh, I love this. And what are you working on right now? Because I know you're out, um, you're working for Oregon Shakespeare Festival right now? Yeah, yeah. I work for Oregon Shakespeare Festival. We just opened our summer shows. There's a really cool um, musical called Revenge Song that's um, mm -hmm. kind of punk rock and um, it's just a coming of age story for an amazing 
um, duelist based on a real historical figure, but I think that most of our show is kind of made up. <laughs> Name, um, named Julie, and um, it's super fun. And right, and then so right now I'm building um, the crafts um, and millinery for Confederates. Oh, cool! Another thing that will open in the fall. Wow! Oh, that sounds so exciting. I just think you probably have one of the most fascinating, speaking of fascinators, fascinating jobs in, in all of the arts. Uh, and you probably get to meet a lot of really cool people, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. And I work with a lot of really cool people. I mean, it's, yeah. it's working in the, in the backstage world of theater is super fun, um, yeah. make long, lifelong friends. Well, just like we're doing here at Met Opera Global Summer Camp, and there, and you're making some lifelong friends here. There's Sonia in uh, St. Petersburg. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. And Diego, our jokester. Thanks, Diego. Friends, I'm so happy to have Roxana here. Roxana, we are up next uh, at 1.30 Eastern New York City time. We are going to be in Sing Along with Mr. Aaron. That's going to be live on YouTube and Facebook. Join us from wherever. So you have about 45 minutes till we'll be live with Mr. Aaron. And I know you won't want to miss that. Um, and a few other reminders. Um, all, of our, uh, all of our materials for the week can be found uh, at, including where to view the uh, Cinderella at metopera.org forward slash global summer camp. I also think summer camp works too. Um, and then you can submit your camper creations to us. Please submit those uh, by Thursday at 5 p.m. so you can be included in the camper showcase on Friday because we want to see these hats. We want to see your yeah. dances. We've already learned to dance this week. And Camp Counselor Tim gave us so many fun things to do out in our neighborhoods with our families. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, oh, of course. And once you've made that hat today, you got to post that on social media, Instagram, tag us, Met Opera Student, Met Opera, hashtag Met Opera Camp. I, I'm so happy to be here with someone who I feel has become a very good friend of mine. Roxana, you're so cool. And we're so lucky to know you. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Oh my gosh. I just get... I feel so lucky that this job that I have uh, means that I get to meet such cool people, people who are so creative. And what I love about meeting someone like Roxana Ramsour is that we realize, oh, my headphone fell out. You realize that like no matter where you are in your journey with opera and music and theater and storytelling, that there's a home for you in the creative arts. You can have, you can be a part of the magic of opera and maybe you're like, I'm not, I don't feel myself in the spotlight, but maybe you really shine in the costume shop or in millinery or somewhere. It's so cool. Bye, Roxana. Thank you from our friends all over the world. How wonderful. Thanks from Mexico. Thanks from all over. I know what cool people we get to meet here at Met Summer Camp. And I feel very lucky that I get to meet all of you. I had a great time too. Thanks, Malia. Thanks, Shen. Oh my gosh. This was so fun. Absolutely. All right, friends. We're going to see you very shortly. I'm going to go uh, take my puppy dog for a walk. Uh, and then we're going to come back and we're going to do a sing along with Mr. Aaron. How do you feel about that? I feel pretty good about it. I don't know. You go get a snack. I'll see you very, very soon. Ah, I'm already leaving. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>